get into it dennis brown in the building what's going on with you today sir I'm doing fine. How you doing? I appreciate it, man. I'm I'm doing good, doing good, heading down to Georgia, good old Georgia, you know, trying to trying to get this last run in before the holidays. Uh, what about yourself? What part of the world you in? Well, I'm over here in Ohio, passing Kirk, Kirklandville, mm. out here on 70. Okay, yeah, good yeah, old 70. Yeah, good old 70, passing the flying day now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Flying J, man, let's let's take it back. Let's 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 take it back, man. Dennis Brown, I I did a I did a segment on you. Uh my partner uh called you up and and chopped it up with you and you know, he brought it to my show, brought it to our attention of uh what happened right. to you uh about a year ago. So let's uh before before we get into all of that, man, let me just uh let me just say, let me just ask you, you know, let's start with your story, man. Your, 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 you know, your trucking story. Uh, I want to hear, you know, how you got started in trucking and how your journey been so far. Well, I got started back in, uh, I started trucking in 1980, 84, 84, 85. Yeah. Old and, uh, school. You back, back, back with oh, the... Yeah. Back with the back with the back with the none of this. No no technology. Yeah. No air I mean no no air rides. You back in you the eighties with the C B. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, bro. Yeah, how, how was it? How was it back then? Back then versus now, my man. Man, back then it was better. It was better at trucking. You know, I mean, everybody helped everybody. If you broke down on the side of the road, the other truckers see you, man, they pull over, give you a hand, help you out. If you need some diesel fuel, you ran out, they take a little diesel fuel out of their truck and put it in your truck, put about 20 gallons in there. Because back then, you know, to, to make a move, you got to have at least 20 gallons mm -hmm. of fuel to make it to a truck stop. You know, all to get the truck started, and I started off in a uh, uh, what year my truck was? It was a 1978 Max cab over Mac with a 238 with a five speed Max to die. Woo! And yeah, and the reason I got that truck in because when I got my license, my articulated like well back then they call them chauffeur license right. out of Florida, right? So, you know, you didn't have to take a, a road test or nothing. Only thing you had to do in the state of Florida back then was go up there, pass a written test, which you call chauffeur license. And you could drive anything in the world as long as it wasn't an airplane. You understand what I'm saying? So easy. Oh, it was so simple then. <laughs> FMC FMCSA just came in and fucked everything up, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, <sighs> you, you just go, you just take your written test. Once you got your written test, it's a chauffeur. You can go drive a truck, and that's what I did. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't supposed to be a truck driver. I was supposed to be a lawyer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> coming out of school. And what happened was my daddy was a truck driver. And this is how it all started. When I was 16 years old, I had a son. So I quit school because I had a son. Right. So I started working with my father. So I always been in my father's truck since I was like four or five years old. Mm -hmm. But I, I never was interested in his truck business. You know, because I hated trucking when I was little because I was always, because it was six of us, six brothers and one sister. And what we used to do, my father used to put us in a GMC uh, Brigadier. He had a 1968 Brigadier GMC mm -hmm. with a two-sitter, a day cab. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Three brothers was in that, three brothers was in that truck and him driving. And everywhere he went, 
we had to get out there and unload his truck. And all and everything everything was on the floor. He put y'all to work. Everything. Yeah, he put us to work. So sixteen when I had my son, he told me, Hey, you, you ain't going to school? I said, Nah. He said, Come on. So I end up in the truck and he said, um, I went everywhere he went. My father slept in the truck. I went out there and unloaded the truck myself. So when I was finished, came in, signed the paperwork, got in the truck. So we worked that whole week. He got paid. My father went in the store, so I, he, he he opened the check and looked at the check. And he put a check on the dashboard. So when he put a check on the dashboard, my father went in the store. So I stayed in the truck. So I sat there and beat that check to see how much. Mm. You would never guess how much he made. Mm. Take a guess how much he made. Uh, man, I don't even want to. I, I don't even want to phantom, bro. I heard the money was good well, back my, in the day. Well, my father drove in a hundred mile radius, local home every day. My father made seventy six hundred dollars back then. <laughs> Come on, that that was a week. Seventy six hundred dollars. Come on, seventy six hundred dollars. Yes, sir. For a week, what? Yes, company a driver. Week. Company driver. A comp- no, sir. He had his own truck. Oh, he had his own truck. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, he had his own truck, but he never paid for fuel because we used to go to the car rail yard, and he used to had to do a lot of piggyback at nighttime after he do his main stuff during the day. And the name of the place he was working at was U.S. Packing out of Bayonne, New Jersey. That was the name of the place he used to work at. So we used to have to, every night when we came in, he might have about seven, eight trucks, trailers. This ain't, this ain't part of what he's supposed to do during the day. This is his side money. But you, when you come in at night, you have to take these, these trailers to the car rail yard. And each one of them, Trellis, he piggybacked to the car rail yard with $175. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Hmm. This was every night. He would have about seven or six or maybe ten at nighttime. So that was his extra money right there. And he never paid for fuel for food. He's about five or six years when he was working for that company. Because every time we hauled the car rail tra- trailer, we used to get our holes and I used to cycle them the fuel at the reefer tank, at the at the car rail tanks, and put in my father's truck. Mm. Do that's, you believe that? That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And also, your father, your father came to you, he and asked you, "Is you going to school?" And you said no. So your father was like, "Look, come on on this truck." He he gave you, he he did he give you the ultimatum like, "Look." You either gonna you either gonna go to school or you gonna work. Which one are you gonna do? Did did he give you that ultimatum? Well, when he found out that I had a son that night, mm-hmm. we woke up the next morning and I was in the bed. He woke me up. He said, Hey, what you doing? I said, I'm sleeping. <laughs> he said, No, you ain't either get up. You're going on the truck. That's <laughs> like that. It ain't no question about it, you going on the truck. I said, okay. So, see, back then, we, you know, we didn't talk back to our, our parents. No, we, like that, yeah, you ain't, know? ain't none of that BS that's going on right now. Right. And whatever, whatever the head of the house said, that what he did, you know? And my father, he was 6'5", 300 pounds. So, you know, he was a big guy. So, now, get, to make a long story short, when I looked at his check, when I looked at his check, I said, oh, damn, what the hell going on? So my father got in the truck. He, he looked over there at, my, at the check and said, well, he said to himself, like, oh, he done looked at the check. So when we went back to the place to pick up the trailer, my father got out there and went to the guard shack to get the paperwork. So I, I went in there with him. You know, you thought I'd be over there sleep, but I'm wide awake now, so I went over there with him. So when I went over there with him to get the paperwork, I looked at the people with the paperwork. Shoot, I jumped in my father's truck. 
I said, I'm going out here to pick up the trailer. Never drove a truck a day in my life. Never drove a truck a day in my life. So I went down there, went to pick up the trailer. I said, well, I looked in the mirror. I said, boy, I know I'm going to get an ass whooping because I, I jumped on my father's truck and took off. So I went down there to pick up the trailer and stuff because I learned by watching Observing. my father, by, you know, driving the truck. I never drove a truck until that day. You know, I just put the thing in gear. Never drove a stick a day in my life at the time. I just, you know, I just seen everything he did. So I backed up to the trailer. So while I'm down there picking up the trailer, I see my father came out the booth, him and my uncle, you know, because his brother was out there working too. But they were peeking around the corner to see that I hook up to the trailer and what up. So as I'm coming out, they going to run back in the car shack. And, and like nothing happened. So I, I got the trailer back. I ain't tearing nothing up. So... My father got in the truck, and we went to go over there, you know, on the road and stuff. So my father said, uh, you looked at my check, huh? <laughs> I said, we talking about that. He said, yeah. Now you want to be a truck driver? I said, yes, sir. He said, yeah, I did I did all the rest of your brothers like that. And that's you, how y'all got started. And, and that's all she wrote right there. Man, that was shout all out she to wrote. Man, shout out to your father, man. I mean, he just, yes, he, yes, he yes. just, he he was the man. Like, yo, you, yo, let's get in the truck. Let me get you in there. You hopped in there, did the damn thing off from us uh, observing. Man, what, what do you think about, what, what do you think about these kids these days that's that's over here talking about, I want to get in the truck. I want to, I want to do this for the bag. I want to do this for the, you know, whatever the case you you did it. Of course, you seen the money, but you you did it. You know, for 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 the heart, right? Yes, yes, yes. Now, all of my brothers drive trucks up for one. You know, he worked for the city of Elizabeth, New Jersey. My brother Damien. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know he the only one don't drive trucks. But the rest of my brothers, we all drive trucks. That's all. You know. And I was a company driver for, when I first started, I was a company driver for about, about four weeks when that man gave me my first paycheck. When that man gave me my first paycheck, he gave me a check for $300. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he, gave me a, he gave me a check for $300. How much? I went from Florida, $300. I went from Florida. From Florida to Buffalo, New York. From Buffalo, New York, I went to Arkansas. From Arkansas, I went to Alabama. From Alabama, I went back to Florida. That man gave me a check for $300. 300 I said, hey, what is this? Three, yes. I three, said, hey, wait, what is this? Wait, 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 wait. 300 That's, wait. Three, that 300 for the week? Three. That was 300 for the week. I said, for the week? Yes. For the week. Man, did you tell me you slapped that dude some sense? Well, what it was was back then in the early eighties, they was only making eight eight to ten cents a mile. Do you remember that? Ooh, I don't eight know. to ten cents a mile. That, that what they were paying truckers back then. Ugh. Eight to ten cents a mile. You know what, though? You know so, what, though? I can. You know what? I can. I. I can. I can feel you on that because. Back then, back in the 80s, motherfucking minimum wage was motherfucking $3.35. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I yes, I, 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 I can feel you. I, I can feel you on that. I can feel you on that. Uh-huh. So, I said to him, so I said to him, I said, hey, 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 what is this? He said, well, you did hear, we did hear you more than you did loaded. Right. I said, oh, yeah? I said, okay. So, I said, well, but I made for the, uh, what was the deadhead pay? He said the deadhead pay was a nickel. I said, nickel? He said, yeah, deadhead pay was a nickel. I said, okay. So I said, all right. I'll fix this right here. So I had a little money in my, in my bank account, right? Already. So I said, well, yeah, I already had a little money in my bank account because I had a settlement when I, moved before I, when I left New Jersey. To go to Florida, got to be a Florida. So I already had a settlement, you know, in my bank account, which I was to touch. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna fix all of this. So I went out there, I went.
went out there and bought me a, a Mac. Back then, that Mac was a 78 Mac. Mm-hmm. That was the Mac with the 238 Master Die cab over. I went and bought that truck. I ain't looked back since. I ain't been no company driver. And along, you know, I've, I've been an owner-operator ever since that. Er, ever since, the, every since that three hundred dollar paycheck. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, shout out to you, Dennis Brown, man. So, all right, yeah. Dennis, man. So, like, like I said, you know, in the beginning, I, I, I did a, you know, I did an S, uh, I did an episode on you, man, because of some BS that happened to you at the uh, truck stop last year. Uh, take us back right. to that. Take us back to that rainy night, man. What, 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 what happened, bro? Man, uh, it was raining so bad that day. You know, wind was blowing and all that. And I said, you know what? It's a little cold out here too. You know, the road freezing up. I said, let me go ahead and pull in this truck stop. Get me a cup of coffee. Let you know, let the rain calm down a little bit. Mm-hmm. So. As I get off of uh, Interstate 70, I got off exit, what well, exit was that, 70? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exit 70, the pilot truck stop. Hold on for a second. Mm-hmm. I got to get this. Say, got Wait a minute. So, okay, I'm back. All right. So, I get off at the pilot truck stop. So it raining so hard, you couldn't see. So I kind of missed my exit for the entrance to go in. Mm-hmm. But I went to the next entrance, which that's the way that all the trucks come out. You know, my first time at this truck stop right here. And when I got off, you know, one truck was coming out, and he see me coming in. He kind of pulled aside and let me through and let him come through. Because you can't back up from over there because it's, it's a long way. You know, when you come in from the other way, you try to back out. You back out in, into the road. So three guys let me camp through, you know, three trucks let me come through and back around. They hit this one guy was on the fuel aisle. So while he's on the fuel aisle, he see me coming that way, so he hurry up, jump in the truck. I'm looking at it. I'm watching him. I said, oh, something about to happen here now because this guy great to block me in. So he turned around. And come up to me head on, head on, and stop blowing the horn, all hard and stuff. I mean, blowing, blowing it. I said, "Look at this fool right here." So as we facing head on, you know, I said, "Now nah, I'm looking all over this truck. We got some of these black, you know, because of my bright light looking inside of his truck. So I see the, you know, the little politician." sticker on the truck. I say, oh, here it go. So I say, here we go. So he yelling and screaming inside his truck. I look at him. I, and I'm sitting there looking and say, look at this food. So I say, yo, just back up. Just back up. He said, no, you back up. So I pull my brace out. I pull my brace out. Mm-hmm. Cut my truck off. I brought my foot up here on the top of the tag. So he didn't like that. So I say, well, I'm going to sit here. So they ain't backing up, you know, which which he could have just back up five feet and just let me go on through. Nah, he want to get out of his truck. So he got out of his truck. When he got out of his truck, he came on the other side. He come to my window. So I kind of cracked my window a little bit. I said, what's the problem? He said, well, you come in the wrong way. I said, I know that. I know I came in the wrong way. I didn't know that. I said, bro, all you got to do is back up a little bit. I could go past you, and you could come on through. He said, nah, you're going to back your ass up. I said, well, who going to make me back up? He said, well, if you ain't going to back up, I got something for your ass to, to, to back you up. I uh, said, what? All right. So, so let, he went to, let me ask you right quick. Um, <coughs> now, you at the time, you didn't know the way you came in was the way out, right? Right. right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just want to clarify that. So the way you came in, yeah. the way you came in, you it, because of the rain and everything, you didn't know that that was the exit. 
You thought that was an injury. Right. Okay. All right. Go yeah. ahead. Continue. Because it was pouring so hard out there like it was a hurricane. As a matter of fact, it was another truck behind me did the same thing. You know? Because now I can't go nowhere. If I do try to back up, I'm going to hit this truck behind me. So he did the same thing because you know how it is. One truck go to sleep in this spot here, all mm -hmm. the other trucks come in to join in. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the other truck, I guess he followed me because he probably thought it was interesting too because you couldn't see. So you get off the ramp, really, the interest to get into that truck stop is right there. But you, if you're not looking to the right, you can't see the interest. You just pass that, and you think that's the interest to the other one. Okay. So meanwhile, so he jumped up on my truck, on, you know, on the side of my truck. So you know what you do? You automatic push the door, open the door, push you off your truck. You know, because I got my window halfway. And I don't want this guy to sucker punch, sucker punch me. Mm -hmm. So when he turned around and said to me, after I push him off the truck, he said, you know, he, he used the N word. He said, I got something to make your ass move. Right? Right. I said, so he went back to his truck. I said, oh, Lord. I said, I ain't going to sit here and be a, a sitting target. Right. So my thing was either ram his truck or get out the truck and kind of, you know, just get away because it was a dark spot right. over there. Right. So as, as I got out of my truck and went between my truck, he got this big long stick. It, it was black, right? I mm -hmm. said, what the hell he going to do with that big ass stick, you know? I said, by the time he's trying to swing on me, I'm going to catch the stick, you know? That's how long it was. Right. Which I thought it was a stick. Right. So he got right. out the truck, you know, but he's doing this inside his truck. He's standing up between the, the two chairs. So when he got out the truck, when he got out the truck, you see, he, I guarantee you, you're going to move your truck. And boy, when he went in, when he got, I, I thought it was a stick, really. So I just stand there because I was ready to walk away, like, towards the what you call. Because I thought the guy was going to get a gun. That's what I thought he was going to get. Because I said, I was going to sit here and be a target out right here in the middle, and I blocked them, you know, forward and backward. So when he went to the stick part, which I thought it was the stick, man, when he pulled that thing out of that case, that was a cinderized sword. Not a machete, a samurai sword. So when I seen the, the civil part, he would the swing. When he swing, I said, oh, man, this guy trying to kill me. He going for my neck. And as he's swinging, going for my neck, I put my hand up there. I put my hand up there. I grab the sword. When I held the sword, I put my other hand on his, on his throat. And I had him up in the air. You know, so I grabbed his throat and I kept squeezing it and I squeezed it too tight and I still got my hand on the sword I don't know my hand is cut all this time so as I squeezed his throat he turned it blue so he dropped the sword so when he dropped the sword I, my hand still around his neck so I, I pushed him to the ground and put my knee on his chest so I grabbed the sword well, I got one knee in his chest and I got the sword, I went to lift the sword up, and I jammed the sword in the ground, right? So I jammed the sword because, because we ended up being on the grass part now. So when I jammed that down in the grass, you cool, you cool. Now, he got on the yellow shirt. I don't know I'm bleeding until I'm, I'm facing down on him. I got my knee in his chest. And at the meanwhile, I said, well, since you cut me like this, you're going to taste all of my blood that I got in my hand. As I got my hand around his throat. So he got blood all over his face, down his mouth. So now he got a black man blood. He just tasted the black man blood, you know. So as I got up, as I got up, I went to take the sword. I picked up the sword. So... When I ended up picking up the sword, I took the sword and put it inside my truck because I, I came back, you know, I don't know what I was thinking, but I just took the sword and put it in my truck away from him.
So when I went back towards on the other side where he was at, that's where he jumped in his truck and tried to get away. So as he tried to get away, now we all over the parking lot. People seeing this now. People seeing all what's going on. So they just, you know, people on a few hours, they sent back, you know, because I made a U-turn, you know, because he jumped over the field and stuff like that. So we jump over the over the field and everything. Everybody, hold on for a second. So he jumped on the field. They, I'm chasing them. I made a U-turn at a truck stop. Made, you know, I'm chasing them all through at the 70, you know, Interstate 70 and everything. And he was going to Target because he had a Target trailer. He was going for Target. And that was, that was Hogan, that was Hogan trucking. So now I'm chasing them all through Target parking lot. You know, he jumping the, the, the curb, dead and everything. So I'm chasing them down. So I'm on the phone with 911. If the first part of it, when you, when you hear no sound, that was me talking to 911. You know, that's why you didn't hear the first sound of what was going on until later, until after I, you know, got the phone with the, with 911. So I'm talking to 911, telling what's going on. So the police, it was two cop cars. So they tracked them down. 